This is a bucket. Dear God, there's more. No! <laughs> that was the best. <laughs> no! <laughs> well, what's that from? <laughs> that was from Team Fortress 2. Which, which, which one? That was the one with the uh, the doctor explains that they only had three days to live because they were eating oh, some sort of okay. bacterial bread. There, that was yeah, the there greatest. Was radio, radioactive I've done nothing but teleport yeah. bread for the last three days. Yeah, no. How and spy, many? And the spy is like establishing everyone's uh, last words or like final rites. Yes. And uh, basically, he he plans to draw everything out of a bucket. So he shows everyone a bucket. He's like, he puts it on the table. This is a bucket. Soldier's like, oh, dear God. And Spy's like, wait, there's more. No. <laughs> and the Spy just gives him this look like, what the fuck, dude? This is probably the worst idea I ever <laughs> He tries to get Scout laid. It's the dumbest. <laughs> and, and they fail. Miserably. No, actually, I think they... It ended uh, pretty well. To have, yeah, it, well, the, well think, their plan failed. Like, they ended up actually well, getting together at the end. Well, spoiler, they weren't poisoned at all by the radioactive bread. So they're all, they're all saved. No! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, they did agree to go on a date on Miss Pauline's one day off out of the whole fucking year, apparently. Yeah. Practically. That's, that's, for, uh, she, that's for a work environment. Isn't she the one to clean up the bodies? I think so, yeah. She's she's basically the... Um, uh, last I checked, the... Basically, every, everything that doesn't involve soldiering. Hmm. And then a little bit of soldiering. I see. You know, why isn't she a playable character by now? Because it's too way too late in the development cycle to do that. I don't know, at this point, it's nothing but hats. Let Hat be a character. Yeah, it, went no, from, like... it went from being a scary girder to a not so scary girder. Oh, is yeah. the Iron Giant here? Alright, complaining to the Lorax is something that I don't like about a modern day environmentalist messages is that they don't say anything new or bring anything new to the table. Like, we know the environment is being harmed by humans. We get that. We know that we're... That, basically, human society as a whole is fumbling to find uh, a cleaner solution. In my and opinion. To, to, in continuing to damage the environment. No, like, in uh, reality, well, I, gonna, I think I we I was already... gonna talk about how the new Lorax sucks. Like, the... whoa! Oh, oh yeah! Oh, the classic one was way better. What the fuck did you do? It glitched. No, I you got it. damaged. You got damaged? Yeah. Wait, there's damage? It looks like you fed the girder. <laughs> yeah, I see. this but level no, no, no. only, apparently. No, but long story short, I think it's a bit too... On the nose? Yeah, it, it's always a bit too on the nose, and they never introduce any new information or give any new thoughts. Like, the, this this conversation is dead. There's nothing left to say. I, I like how... I was gonna uh, say how the original version of the Lorax really just was the one that did it right, and then the new one completely shits all over that. The you reason mean, like, why the original... Movie the, re the reason why the original worked so well is because it made the viewers think. Like, the what yeah. are the possibilities of the forest growing back and finding out if the Lorax was ever gonna return. Yeah, not only that, but the main villain, you never saw his face. Who was his name? The Unsler? The Unsler. And the reason Unsler. why you never saw his face is so you couldn't connect with him. Right. That was the whole reason behind not giving him the face. If you can't give him a face, you can't relate to him. He's basically... Yeah, no. He's the faceless entity of... Capitalism. I wasn't... I, did, I didn't want to say that, but yeah. Not capitalism. Well, or, I, I, excuse it's, it's me, capitalism, uh... Capitalism, more industrialism. 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 Industri industrialism. Yeah, I, yeah. I like that one. I, I think that's a better explanation. Yeah, yeah. sorry, not capitalism, because it's, it's yeah, industrialization. Because, because in theory, capitalism can coexist with environmentalism. It's just a matter of getting how, to that point. It's understanding the ethnic value of how you are producing wisely to keep your business alive. Right, and that was something yeah. that Wunzler never did. 
Right, because he kept thinking more about the money and the amount of how much he was selling, rather thinking how to preserve. Exactly. Okay, that actually reminds me of another good point that I have with a lot of modern media, is a lot of, like, basically any sort of multimedia showing, which is movies and games, is, um, it's visual storytelling. And a lot of restraint, a lot of what's effective, I find, is less about what you, uh, less about uh, how you show everything, and more what you decide to show. Because yeah. in, because, uh, especially yeah. in the Armored Core series, it's a very simplistic basic plot it's basically a post-apocalyptic world that humans are ruining again uh mm -hmm. through more warfare but the cool thing about it is that they basically never let you connect with any humans because they never show you a human's face ever we don't even right. see a human's body until the uh, until armored core last raven and even then it's only just faceless grunts mm -hmm. yeah i i also wanted to point out too in sonic the hedgehog sat am they did a little bit of environmentalism, but it wasn't like shoved in your face because right. you had Dr. Robotnik uh, taking over Mobius, and you can see how he has the ambition to roboticize everything, including the citizens. And the Freedom Fighters are trying to prevent that all from happening to the point where there's no forest at all. Yeah, and what's it called? Going back to the deciding not what to, what not to show, uh, something that I've found a lot of horror writers uh, have experimented with is the idea that nothing will be scarier than what the viewer can imagine. The more you leave them to the imagination, the better. Mm -hmm. and, that, the and that's actually why I love stuff like uh, The Haunting, the old one, The Old Haunting, yeah. as well as stuff like The Shining. Yeah. I, I think when it comes to in the environmental movies, I think my favorite one would be The Day After Tomorrow. The fact how nature is practically more powerful than you could possibly imagine. I mean... Because the scariest thing of all isn't what you show, it's what they can't see. Right. Yeah. No, it's just things that you wouldn't even have a second thought. Right. Because, uh, what's it called? A lot of... A lot of amazing storyteller writers found out that nothing w ever will trump humanity's fear of the unknown. Ever. Mm -hmm. and that is, to, to a lot of people, the scariest thing ever. Oh yeah, the unknown <clears throat> is something, but it's, it's an endless void of nothingness. Yeah, it, even if something's there, it, sure. like something can be explained in great detail, but until you see it for yourself, you're scared of it. Exactly. It's an abstract concept that you can literally only define by not showing it. Yeah. Please follow us through with these Zen riddles. What is so hot? It's cool. It's cool. It's hot. Pop tarts. Pop tarts. <laughs> Damn it. This is like you put a. Um... Freeze a burrito in the microwave. It's frozen, it's frozen, it's frozen, it's cold, it's cold, it's cold, it exploded. It's Elsa. You ruined it. <laughs> you ruined it. You ruined everything! You're tearing me apart, Pop Tots! Oh yeah, when we start Dungeon Siege, we gotta watch the Uva Bowl movies oh, and Dungeon Siege. Uh, you know, I, was, I want to ask, do you want to do that before we play Dungeon Siege? No, because I want I want you to see the story, how bare bones it is, but how how brilliant it is as just a vehicle, because it's it's pretty it it's pretty generic in how it presents itself, but it's never overbearing. It is never in your face. This is like it, they they establish the the exposition in this nice, beautifully shot uh, detail over narration, like you. They're describing like a war that happened like 500 years ago, and all the, all you see is just bodies and corpses and just the the ruins of an ancient battlefield, and I think that's great. And then all of a sudden, you just see a farmer who's just tilling the fields, and all of a sudden he sees something, throws it down his hoe, and goes to run towards his friend who's dying, and that's the beginning of the game. And I think that's fantastic. And, and then the Uva Bowl movie, your main character, who is a farmer, is named Farmer. <laughs> let, me, let me, let me. Wow, that is some great writing. Let me add. Did you? 
let me add more context to this. Jason Statham, the the at the time who was the pinnacle of action, like the pinnacle of action movie protagonists, was playing a farmer named Farmer in a high fantasy setting that made no sense. I bet, Hello, he, I bet he teams up with Paladin and Wizard and no. Knight. Surprisingly enough, he he does team up with some of the characters in the game. I, I've only read the plot synopsis. I haven't seen the movie, and I haven't spoiled the ending for myself. So there are things for me to react to. But it's from what I've read, it's fucking awful. And judging by the reviews, it only gets worse oh because boy, there's three I movies. I can't wait to see this. Yeah, Slacker, oh. you'll be playing you'll be playing Dungeon Siege two and three with me, and parts of Dungeon Siege one. <laughs> <laughs>